Hi, Stefan the BMW DIY guy. I'm really excited about my project today. It's actually tools. I'm not actually doing something specifically on any of the cars today. What I've done is I've picked up a Bend Pack Quick Jack 5000, the SLX. I could not be more excited about this. This is going to be a fantastic tool for me as I'm doing upgrades and maintenance on all of the cars. When you do things like brake flushes, for example, doing that with a jack and jack stands really takes forever. You have to go and work your way around the car. If you've only got one jack, you've got to hit multiple jack points and work around. If you haven't seen the quick jack, it's a series of hydraulic lifts. So there are these big lift plates that go on either side of your car. You hit the button and your car is up in the air up to about 22 inches in the air in seconds all completely off the ground, completely ready to go. It's really cool. So this was a huge investment in the tools in my garage. It's something that honestly I never thought I would have. So I'm really excited to get this set up. I wanna show you how to set one up yourself. It's really not hard and you need some basic tools, but you'll just walk through it and we'll go through the whole process out in the garage. So let's get out there and get started. All right, so we're out in the garage. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, I'll show how to do one side of the rails. And again, you're gonna duplicate this twice and I won't, I won't make you sit through me doing this twice, but I'll show you how to do it once, really simple. So we're gonna do uh, the lift setup and its connection and its short hose and one of the long hoses. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna turn around and just duplicate that on the other. Then I'll show you how you set up the pump, but let's start here. So the first trick that I've done is I've separated the rails. You can put one hand down low, one hand up high, and you can lift, get some space in between, and put a block in between the two, one of your lifting blocks. That way you get a little bit of extra room to work, and it makes it a lot easier to work with your Allen wrench. So this is the six millimeter. You're going to take out this little plug out of the cylinder. So you can just stick your, stick your Allen wrench in here. It's pretty loose. comes right out. Okay, so we'll take that off. Now we're going to take one of our elbow joints. We got this guy right here, we're learning a little 90 degree elbow joint. So we're gonna take your covers off. When you take a look at this, there's two ends. One has a rubber gasket, one doesn't. The rubber gasket is the side that's gonna go into the cylinder, but let's go ahead and put some pipe tape on the non-gasket side first. Now, when you put on pipe tape, you always wanna do it in the direction that you're going to put the pipe on or put the hose on, the fitting. So we're gonna go clockwise in this case. So you take a little bit of our pipe tape, lay it on here. Wrap it around a couple of times, once, twice, and about three times. Just pull it off and just lay it down nicely over the threads. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is that when you put your pipe tape on, don't cover, don't cover the opening at all, okay? So when you put this in place, again, rubber gasket side in, you want to turn this, turn this fitting in into the cylinder as far as it'll go before you actually uh, uh, tighten the nut at all. So go ahead and just, just take this around, 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 around. Now, the other thing that you wanna do is this fitting you want pointed up at about the 10 o'clock position. So if we were looking straight on from this side, it would be pointing up at about a 10 o'clock position. So it's about there now and it's getting tight enough that it probably won't make one more rotation around with my fingers. So I'm gonna set, set and hold that and it's at its position. I've got my 11 16 wrench, so I'm just gonna hold the fitting in position while I tighten this down. The other thing is that when you tighten this fitting, it doesn't have to be just super tight, so don't crank on it too hard, too far, just snug, as it were. Okay, so that's about good. All right, and it's in the right position. My pipe tape is in the right, is set as well. Okay, so now let's take our small hose. We got caps at either end, we've got the little cap that screws in here to the female side. We've got a cap over the male side, just like that. Now you can put the fitting on now if you want, which is uh, the, the uh, quick connect fitting, which I'm gonna do as well. So just make it easy on myself, like I've got easy access to the hose. Again, this doesn't have a rubber gasket on it or anything, so we're gonna use a little bit of pipe tape. So we go once, twice, and three times, snap that off, just like that. Now, we've got our quick connect, and this is the male side. So you've got a whole bunch of the female fittings. This is the male connection, so you can tell by pulling the cover off. That's the male side. So we're gonna leave the cover on. We're gonna take this and we're gonna screw this gently into place. And yeah, a little bit of traffic today, sorry guys. So, 
had to have my garage doors open to get a little extra light today. So finger tight, this is where you get to see me try to do two tools at once. So take your adjustable wrench, put it on the side of the hose. I'm gonna tighten it down a little bit to help hold it into place once I've got it on here. Let me back it off a little bit and tighten down and the wrench holds it a little bit just like that. Okay, and then take your 22 millimeter here, take your 22 millimeter on and tighten and you can bring it around and around and this you want reasonably tight. So that's about there. Good. Okay, so that was our 22 and our adjustable wrench. All right, so now we've got our male quick connect at this end. We've got our female at this end, which is gonna be 11 16 as well. So we're gonna take this and we're going to feed it up underneath and put it onto this fitting. Just clockwise tighten. And go around, around, around. So we're gonna get it finger tight. So it's gonna hit that pipe thread. Okay, just like that. We've got our 11 16 And we will tighten this down. Go. All right, so just about set. And make sure you're fitting, again, your fitting is at that kind of 10 o'clock position and you should be fine. There we go. Ah, that should be nice and tight. Okay, so now our, our lift rail is all done. Super simple as you can see with our two fittings at either end. We're gonna bleed it and do some other things here in a little bit, but I wanna show you how to do each. So we've got our, we've got our long pipes. Okay, so we take our covers off again, both sides. Take our pipe cape. Let me straighten out my pipe cape a little bit. It's gotten a little, little sideways. And that's okay. I mean, it'll twist and it'll do different stuff. You can just take off the extra. It's like that as it sticks to my hand. <laughs> uh, I've got traffic today. Sorry, guys. All right. So then, again, we're going to go clockwise because that's the direction we want to go. So we go clockwise around, around our threads once, twice, three times. Snap it off, smooth down a little bit of the extra. Don't be over the opening. Let's do the other side too while we're here. Take it, lay that into the threads, hold the end down, wrap around once, twice, three times, just like that. All right, so now we've got pipe tape on both ends of, our, of one of our long hoses. You're gonna take your female, your female quick connects here, right? We're gonna do the same trick. Screw it into place, finger tight, till it gets into place right there, just like that. Nice and simple. Take our adjustable wrench, get it on the hose side. I'm gonna tighten my wrench down to help me hold onto the hose. Just like that, I'll help hold it into place. Take my 22 again, and covers in the way here a little bit, there we go. All right, so take my 22, crank it around. And again, you want pretty tight on these to about there. And you can feel when it tightens down really, really well. Okay, so there's one side. Let's do the other. All right, just like this. Easy, easy. This may look complicated, may look a little intimidating when you get the boxes. They're big, they're heavy but this is an easy setup and something you can absolutely do to get this tool into your garage. Okay, so holding in the place with the adjustable wrench, got my 22, and I will crank it around to about there. All right, so now, okay, so we are all done with these. All right, so our long hose is set up, our quick connect here on the, on to the lift frame is set up, so I'm gonna set that aside. All right, so I'm gonna go do the other side now, and then I'll come back and we'll show how we get the pump all set up. We're gonna add fluid, we're gonna add the hoses, and we're gonna be good to go. All right, so let's get the power unit set up. Pretty simple. Um, first thing you gotta do is take these covers off. So I've already loosened them with, with my adjustable wrench, so you just screw them off, and they will come out. Now, the fittings that you're going to put on have the rubber gasket on them, so you can tell that they're the correct ones. So if you look at them, you can see you get covered on one end, you've got the rubber gasket on the other, so you don't have to use pipe tape on these, so don't use them. The other thing you want to do is you want to use the bottom fitting first, so it's a lot easier to get to uh, with your wrench, and you're going to use the 22 millimeter on this. So 
unfortunately, as my cover is going to give me a little bit of a hard time here, so let's see if I can get it out of the way a little bit. So, we'll just get that finger tight to begin with to there. And then we've got the 22 millimeter here, which if I pulled the cover off, I could probably, I've got a ratcheting 22 millimeter, right? So, you could always use the ratchet side of this to make it easy. And you want fairly tight. Don't, don't kill it, but you want it fairly tight. You want to make sure that that stays on. So I'm, I'm actually going to keep that off for now. I'll take this one off as well uh, to make sure that I can get to it more easily. All right, so that bottom one is in. Let's fit the top one in. I bet you my wrench will not fit around it this time in the closed end, but we'll, we'll give it a shot here. Let's see. Hey, it does. All right, so we'll fit this into place as well. It's nice to have ratcheting your inches, let me tell you. So that's reasonably tight. I don't want to strip it. That would be a nightmare. So, and then we'll fit our covers back on. You always want to leave these covers on to protect these fittings when uh, you're not using it. So we'll fit those back on. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is you've got, you've got to add ATF or, or transmission fluid into your our tank for the pump. Now, there's, all the guides for these say that you can have uh, any kind of different bleeder valves here. You can have multiple different kinds. So yours may look different. I also don't know what size this is. It's bigger than 22 millimeter. I'll tell you that for nothing. I don't actually have a wrench big enough for this. So I'm probably gonna get the name wrong. I've always called these water pump pliers. <laughs> it's an adjustable set of pliers. Um, and I've had this for, you can't believe how long. So I just used these, got this loose. I'm going to pull this off so you can pull our bleeder valve off. Now, again, this takes about two and a half quarts. I've got a nice clean funnel here, which is like almost taller than my camera angle. So just pour this in carefully. And I'll just show one of these. I'm not going to make you just sit here interminably watching. Pour, me, pour in uh, transmission fluid here, or ATF fluid. All right, so we will get this poured in here. So the other thing you want to do is you pour all this in, give a little bit of gap with your funnel to make sure you got some air between your funnel edge and uh, the reservoir itself. It'll help it uh, let air out as you do this. Okay, so there's one. Now, so I'll, uh, I'll top off with the other two and a half. So I'll add one more, I'll add half of the second one and I'll check my fluid levels here at the top. The other thing you want to do is you're going to keep that container, that, that half quart you've got left, because once we start pressurizing the system and bleeding it, uh, you may have to top this reservoir off a little bit. But that's, that's pretty much set up for, for the power unit, which is nice and easy. I'm going to rest the fluid, then we're going to move back to the lifts. We're going to pressurize uh, our cylinders, and then we're, we're going to bleed them. We're real close to being able to test this. Okay, quick correction. So uh, the newer models actually don't take two and a half quarts. They actually take 2.1 total. Um, so as I, put, I was putting the second one in, I noticed I basically I'm full. So the two and a half is based off of older information and, and they've obviously changed the power unit a little bit. They're now 2.1. The reservoir should be topped off with about, it says about a half inch uh, uh, below the, uh, or half an inch below the, below the top of your, of your reservoir. So um, it's not three, it's actually just, just barely two. So, and then just gently screw your, ble your breather valve back in. And so that will be good to go. And I'm gonna tighten it down with my adjustable wrench to make sure that that is okay. Like I said, and these may look different too, depending on which one you get. But I wanted to give that quick correction as I found it, because I, I went to go add the third and I realized it won't take a third. So the power unit's done. So now we're gonna talk about uh, adding uh, pressure. Now you can use a powerized, uh, so if you have a uh, compressor, uh, or, which I don't yet, um, or you can even use a bike pump. So I'm gonna show you how you, we, uh, we're gonna compress the rails, uh, make sure that the pressure inside those are set correctly. Then we're gonna bleed all of this and we're almost done. We're almost ready to show the first lift. Okay, so one of the last few things we wanna do before we bleed, before we lift, lift these for the first time and bleed them, is you want to make sure that these cylinders are pressurized. You have them on both sides. There's a little cap like you would find on the valve on a bicycle tire. And if you don't have a compressor or something similar, you literally can just use a bicycle pump. So this just has a little pressure gauge on it. You want, you want to take these up. 
to 50 pounds. So I'll hook it up just like a bicycle tire. So look at this. I am well below 50 right at the moment. Look at this 40, about 45. Yeah, right there, there's 50. So take it off quickly so it doesn't lose any air. Then put your cap back on. All right, so I've done, I've done both sides, so they're both ready to go. And you can see that my quick connects are all set. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the power unit. I'm gonna connect it, and we're gonna show lifting them up, up and down for the first time to get fluid moving, moving through the system. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing here. So now we're gonna hook up all of our hoses up. Um, I put my pump at this end so you can see it, or, or the power unit at this end so you can see it a little better. So I'm just gonna run the hoses down the middle. Normally you'd have the, have the power unit probably at this end. Right? So you pull the cover off, your quick connects, pull the cover off, and it just presses and snaps into place, just firmly like that. We're gonna hook that to the power unit. We'll do the same on this side. So make sure you don't pinch any hoses when you do this. That way you don't have any problems. So you take, you take your quick connects, you press them together, and then push the collar of the female side out and it locks in. So you'll do the same thing down here at this end. We'll walk it down. Makes it a little bit awkward on how I set this up, just because I wanted you to be able to see all of the operation as it went. So push it in, push out the collar, just like that. It snaps in, and I did the lowest one first. And I'll run this one. Now, when we do this, so you can see my hoses have not been unrolled before. And I'll make sure that I don't, you're not going to get trapped or pinched by any of this. Now, the first operations of this are going to be a little jerky because it's pushing fluid, all of that hydraulic fluid that you just added, it's pushing that hydraulic fluid through the system. Okay, so that's set, and I'm going to run my pump back a little bit, my power unit back a little bit. So I get a little more space to make sure that it's not all set up there. Okay, and I'm running the uh, 110 unit because I don't have 12 volt or, or 220 out here in the garage. So everything's connected, power unit's plugged in. So let's do it. So it's gotta pump fluid through the system this first time, which is good to have a little bit of ATF fluid left over so we can make sure to top it off. So you don't want to go past the first top lock position. So here we go. It's just short of the first lock. Then we're going to come back down. Like I said, operation is going to be a little jerky at first as it's pumping all of this fluid through the system. A couple of things you don't want to do, and good tips and tricks while we do this. Number one, never run it all the way up to the top position without a load or weight. Uh, on top of the rails. The other thing is never uh, have your car, like take the wheels off your car and run these all the way down to the ground because it won't be able to lift. So these count on having pressure at the top to compress them. It also counts on having a, being able to a little bit of a gap to start before it hits a weight load at the bottom uh, for, for them to operate uh, properly. You can end up with some issues if you don't. So as you can see, we've got Jerky operation, but this is perfectly normal and what should be expected at first. Okay, back up. It's pumping all the fluid through the system. You've got all kinds of air that's going through back and forth, and this will smooth out nicely once you do this three or four times as we go through all of this and get all the air out of the system. So I'm going to do this another uh, three or four times. I'll get this all cleaned up and then I will show you how to bleed the system. Okay, so I've run the frames up probably five or six times. They're starting to smooth out an operation. You can definitely hear some air coming out of the bleeder valve in the power unit. So we're gonna show a trick on how to bleed these. You can bleed them in this position, uh, but it's hard to get to, plus the cylinder, your bleed valve's at the bottom of the cylinder where your air is gonna be at the top. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, it does suggest potentially using two people to do this. You can do it with one if you're careful. Also, this is a 4.5 millimeter Allen wrench. So I've heard five millimeter, I've heard six in a couple of places. Uh, they've updated the guide as well to say it's either a five or a 4.5. I was lucky to have a 4.5.
Okay, so I'm going to lift from this end. As you can see, that'll put the bleeder valve of the cylinder right here at the top. So I've got a rag with me. I've got this 4.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Now when you do this, this can be pretty tight. So make sure not to get your fingers. So I can hear some air bleeding out. Got a little bit of fluid coming out as well. So I'm going to loosen it again. That was just a very slight loosen. Okay, I'm not hearing any air come out now. I'm getting fluid. So we'll come back and tighten. So between the bleeder valve on the reservoir itself and then bleeding the cylinders, that'll get all the air out of the system. Okay, so that took care of it. And this is a pretty effective way of doing this to make sure that that'll get all the air to the top under pressure to make sure it comes out. So let's set it back down. Not pinch any hoses as well, like that. So now I'll do it, I'll do it on the second one and then we'll, uh, we'll do a lift of the car. Okay, so now that we're done bleeding it and it's all good to go, um, I've put the uh, lift rails underneath my F32 here to use as a demonstration. Um, I've got those big yellow caution stickers to the front. All the diagrams show that that's the proper orientation. And I'm using the tall uh, lift pads right at the moment and they're directly under my jack pads on each side. So I don't want to put any undue pressure on the frame or anything, so I'll make sure to line them up with jack pads. So let's give this a shot. Let's see what happens. Ah, nice smooth lifting. This is going to be fantastic. Okay, so let's go back down. And I'm not going to lift all the way today, but back, back down. Nice and smooth the whole way. That's fantastic. All right, I am really excited. This is going to be a great new tool for my garage, and this is going to be fantastic. Okay, so back inside all cleaned up. I've got all my tools put away. I've actually figured out a great way to store my quick jacks. I've got hooks on the wall and I've stood them up and put them into sturdy hooks. And so they'll be up and out of the way and off the floor of my garage, which I think is going to work really, really well. So a number of things to think about with this project. One, do not drive over the top of these. So this isn't something where you'd slide it underneath your car or, you know, and then drive out or drive in. Don't do it. Bad idea. Also, don't take all your wheels off on your car uh, while lifted and then run it all the way down to the ground because the quick jack again needs a little bit of space for it to be able to lift off and if it is all the way down to the bottom and under weight it's not going to lift the other thing is also at the other end never run it all the way completely up at the top as high as it'll go without any weight on it because then it needs weight to come back down now you could potentially add some weight after the fact if you did it accidentally or something just don't do it. So don't, don't run it all the way under down, all the way down under, under weight. Don't run it all the way to the top without weight. Don't pinch the hoses. Make sure you really take care of this. This is not an inexpensive tool. And if you take care of it, it'll take care of you for a long time. Last thing, also make sure to check your fluid reservoir because as we bled the system, it definitely will be down a little bit. Read your manual. manual. It talks about having about a half inch of, of gap at the top of your reservoir. So check that after you've done all the bleeding. Last, check out Quick Jack's uh, channel on, on YouTube. Max is a riot. So their, their quick tips guy, Max, is really funny. And he has, got, he has a lot of great tips and crazy things that you can do with your Quick Jacks and crazy things not to do. So make sure to check that out. So I thank you for your time. I hope that this was helpful to you. Make sure to click subscribe and the little alarm button, which, which is an alert as well. So as I have new videos coming up, this is a tool video and I've got more project videos that are on the horizon that I'm really excited about. Thank you, for, thank you to Quick Jack for a fantastic product and my partnership with them so I can bring this tool to you and show you what a great advantage this will be in your garage. So thank you so much. I'll see you on my next video.